Yaman bless Wagwan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? <laughs> Bro, I love you so much. How are you doing, my man? I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm doing good, you? I'm doing fantastic. Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to a new video. Today, we have King Cash with us. Hello, King Cash. Nice to meet you, and thank you for having me. Why am I saying nice to meet you like <laughs> you haven't talked before? Yeah. <laughs> thank you for having me on this. It's, it's finally nice to meet your show's energy i'm liking it mm -hmm. yes thank you so most of my watchers probably also know you already but for those who don't can you introduce yourself to them so i go by king cash you guys can follow me on instagram i'm king cash on my tiktok probably some of you already know me uh i mainly focus on the galactic federation extraterrestrials and astral projection i love those and i specialize and teaching people and guiding people through those things. And I just love having a community that is so, so unique in their soul, so unique in who they are. And these people are for sure going to change the world. And that is my favorite thing to do. My favorite job ever is to help people like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's amazing message. Let's just dive straight into it. Today, we're going to talk about um, your past lives, specifically the ones about Lyra. So what, okay. what can you tell us about those? Ooh, Lyra is, as we know, the core of where all life started in the galaxy so it'd be like mm -hmm. it'd be like on earth saying you know we all started in africa from the black woman it is very much true it's like in lyra we all started from the felines who were invited here to start life in this galaxy mm -hmm. and the avians and they created these beings the humans and the reptilians starting there it was it was interesting to see how they were invited to this galaxy because of what they did in other galaxies looking at the greater universe so they were invited here and they were like oh well you guys succeed over here did this and did that over there can you guys help start life in this galaxy and they were like all right lit started creating like the felines created the humans avians created the reptilians it was interesting to see how unified we were and then how polarized it started to get mm -hmm. But this is the core. It wasn't like it wasn't like um, light against dark. Service to others for the betterment of all, and service to self for the betterment of all, which resulted in the polarization of light and dark. And to see the core of that, like how how violent we fought each other, how that resulted in the disbursement of us in the galaxy. Seeing that as the core of our gal galactic history, it's amazingly beautiful. Also very rough when you look back at it, even though it is very ancient ancient history even on the galactic level looking at it from galactic beings level like that's still very ancient mm -hmm, but yeah. it is um it really is the core of it and then getting into um the memories where we were seeing the planets being infiltrated and how they did that and how they destroyed our planets mm -hmm. yeah that would be interesting yeah it was a whole nother ball game of understanding how they work and then seeing how they're still implying those tactics and things on other planets especially earth now what the beings call the terran wars it's very cool because then you see star seeds like lyra star seeds or other star seeds who have fought the reptilians in so many lifetimes they come here with this knowledge like oh we've done we've done this before mm -hmm. or like this is not as bad as you know back in the day it, yeah. it's so cool to see how their soul remembers and it's fast mm -hmm. yeah it really is um so when did you first um start to regain your memories of past lives Ooh, good question so it was about i would say 20 i graduated high school in 2019 and then around 2021 mm -hmm. around there because I was supposed to go to college in 2020 and then COVID happened. They're like, you got to wait a year. So then I switched <laughs> yeah. my major and I was going to go to university for psychology. And then they told me I had to wait a year again. And those times where I was waiting a year, I noticed this was so universal. I was like, okay, well, might as well. I'm into, I already knew I was an empath, didn't fully know what that was. And I wanted to understand how all the spiritual stuff works more that I've been experiencing. I was like, let me just get into it. And with my journey, that's where my journey on TikTok started. And I started meeting all these people and stuff like that. And then my first memory was when they invaded our planet, bluntly. So they were already mm -hmm, yeah. infiltrating our planet disguised as us or or getting 
our leaders to think a different way. Basically, they were getting our vibration lower. Mm -hmm. And then they just invaded one day. They just came down and just took it over. And I remember the memories of running in like this fear. And I kept hearing like, I kept hearing never again. And we can never forget we're royalty. And we can never forget who we are no matter where we go in the galaxy. And I was confused. I was like, wait, so I was I was royalty? Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and the feeling explain. of it, of like, these are my people. And I had to like, it felt like it was my fault what was happening. So then I started to realize, okay, so then I was a royal. But what does that mean? Yeah, what does it mean? And it's, yeah, it's very different from here, how it's very egotistical in the galaxy. Being royalty means you're connected to everyone and you represent all and all. You are all of them and all of them are you. And so it's it's very more soul-based and very more, a lot more responsibility, which humans tried to mock mm -hmm. on Earth, right? And it's very yeah. egotistical here. But um, my first memory, I was running and the crocodile head beings were crazy and they were like eating people in front of us. And I was... I was so emotional. I literally sat in the corner of my bed right there, like on the verge of crying and like in this emotion. I was like, what the hell am I seeing? This can't be my imagination. And when I talked to my mentor about it at that time, she was like, you're seeing the Lyran Wars and you were, you know, you were a royal at that time. And I was like, what? That explains why I felt like I was royalty all my life, but mm -hmm. thought maybe it was my african heritage and i was like oh I, i'll find out about it more later and stuff like that and then i was like okay so this is soul based but what does that mean and then it led me down the whole rabbit hole they call it of past life memories and realizing my purpose on earth and then when i started astral projecting then i started talking to these beings i would see in visions and i'm like okay so that's real so we do have a connection they're like hell yeah they already Everywhere I went, they already knew who I was. And they were like, we support your mission on Earth. And they would always say it. And then the more memories and awakening I saw, the more I was like, wow. So what they're telling me is true. And now I can fully step into this purpose with understanding of myself in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really beautiful. So you said, because I, I've just noticed something, like I've done... You're now the third person to come on this uh, YouTube series podcast. But until now, every one of you at first was interested in psychology, which really, which mm. is really, you know, say, why is everybody interested in such psychology? Eventually, nobody did it. Like the, the Zeros, you went for music and Ski, Ski went more um, in the um, teaching area and you, you also. So I found it very interesting. Mm. Have you something to say about that? Yeah, that's actually is interesting you say that, but it makes total sense because psychology isn't just mind based. It's understanding how we work, how we function, how we as humans actually like what our power is mentally. And I was so intrigued by that with all the spiritual work I was doing. I was just, I was in my room reading and researching 24 7 because i couldn't go to school so i'm like might as well make my room to school and i end up just more advancing myself and working on myself every single day as i was in high school but now i can focus on 100 percent. so i was like i'm just gonna do this i'm gonna hustle i'm still not where i want to be fully but mm -hmm. i am where i wanted to be at then or even more okay. where i want to be at then and i realized psychology definitely plays a huge part in my journey now and it always did. And you could say everything I do does relate to psychology because we're always looking at humans, how they function, how mm -hmm. how their civilization works. And as star seeds, we've always done that. And psychology gave us that way of understanding. So for most star seeds, especially Lyran ones or Arcturian ones to get into psychology, makes total, total sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This really cl clarifies it for me. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it was a good explanation. Um, yeah, uh, let me ask you, have you been into okay. psychology as well? No, not really. Or, yeah, okay. mm, maybe a little bit, but not, not really that much. I'll always Tell me, since... what were you most intrigued by or, like, kind of into before uh, the whole spiritual aspect or the soul aspect started kicking. Before, I don't know. I was six, I was six when it kicked in, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I was interested in before my six. Okay. Um, before, yeah, I. I always yeah. study before as well. Like when I was a kid, I'd, I'd be like, okay, I, I noticed. I was actually thinking about this last night. What are the odds? I was like, <laughs> whoa. Okay, so I was hard into birds. I loved birds, and I was just obsessed with them. And then mm -hmm. I realized the avian aspect, and then. I loved, I hated fighting, but 
I was always in like protection of people and I love trains and like um <laughs> and how people worked. I wanted to study people 24 seven. That's all I did when I was <laughs> little. And um I loved people just love different types of people and understanding how different people worked and i still do that to this day and then i realized mm -hmm. it was part of my liar and who my what my soul is how it's used to that so studying a little bit of when i was little and studying how i've advanced now kind of shows me where my soul is and was right from the jump it gives me access and understanding of like who i truly am and that is something i always get people to do is not look at not necessarily look at their past so much like that but look at who they are as a soul as soon as they were born what were you like what were you like when these things started happening mm -hmm. to you or when you were more free or when you are now what is your soul naturally like and with that you get so much access to your power what you could do who you are what you need to work on and then you get access easily super easily doing this way into getting your past lives and seeing who you were and then that makes that makes your whole spiritual journey way easier than people who don't study themselves mm -hmm. okay so from the memories of your past lives who who are you so specifically? i was a princess on this planet called avalon and when i started looking into it online and i kept seeing avalon every i kept seeing the word avalon everywhere around me in the mm -hmm. universe and then when i looked it up i was it said that was a planet in Lyra. And I was like, okay, well, that aligns with my memories of my planet being destroyed. And so I remember them, like, they were tricking my father, which was king. And I was trying to get him. I was like, I was like, dad, do you see they are, they're tricking us. There's something not right with them. And I was a half blood. I was half royal. And um, I was half um, just Lyran. And so seeing that there was a lot of trouble with the half-blooded royal thing like the mm -hmm, royals yeah. saw me as half them half not and this is when our civilization started getting a little more ego driven so we were stepping a little more away from our true self just a little i noticed <laughs> that but we were still with our power of royals we're like our duty is to the people and that was uh, we had the soul power or exchange from the felines that our purpose we were put here for a purpose to guide the rest and so it was never were better or worse and the people never saw it like that we were family and so me being a half royal there were some arguments because the queen didn't like me she was like oh they're only half blood and i was supposed to be queen next but tech, there was a whole politics <laughs> so they're okay. like oh well, they're half blooded you shouldn't and then that's when they invaded. So it never really happened. I never became yeah, queen. Okay. Um, but then when our planet was destroyed, then we went on a journey of, long story short, I went to Andromeda to learn how to fight. I was like, I have to protect my people. I have to save my people. So then there was a whole war in Lyra with them. And then us being dispersed in the galaxy. And there was so much time where I was a lone bounty hunter during the Orion Wars time. And anywhere I'd go, they'd be like, you're the princess from Avalon. And they would ridicule me or they would love me. So many different uh, views of it, but there was a lot of ridicule toward Lyrans at that time. And they were so dispersed. And I, have, I was on a mission to find my royal family and my family from my planet, and just Lyrans in general. Because Lyrans, they're being so ridiculed that they were like, all right, we'll just, we have to find a new home. So a lot went to Sirius and became Syrians and all that and i would find lyrans and i remember going on one planet it was in orion and i was like i found you like you're a lyran and they were like yes but i'm trying to forget that now and i'm like but we said we would never forget and they were like well i'm forgetting because i don't want none of that business anymore mm -hmm. and so wow. so many lyrans were like getting away from their heritage but i was on a mission to find them so then i started creating a group of people that like after finding them, a lot of the people in the server remember, they're like, I remember when you found me and then we went somewhere else. And so a lot of the people that know me on a soul level know me for finding them and then us working together to create a galactic federation. And that was one of the coolest memories because I thank them for helping me and us working together to create a galactic empire because our home world was destroyed. So we're like, our galaxy is our home now. We got to protect everybody else from we want we need to make sure this never happens again to anybody else and then um we created that then we started finding more lyrans we started getting ourselves together finding other beings who wanted to join our federation so it became very unified but the struggle to find our people 
Lost in the Galaxy was one of my hardest but most empowering because I said, I'm going to find no matter what. And you know what's funny is because I was still in my feline more feline body, I'd go around the galaxy searching for thousands of years for my people and I'd get ridiculed everywhere. Like some jokes, they they make jokes saying things like, oh, a lioness looking for her cubs and they would laugh or they would say like, you're never going to find them. You're the reason why your home plan is destroyed mm. and stuff like that. And that just made my fire stronger. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to find them and I'm going to protect even these people that ridiculed me from what's happening and what are the odds those people end up coming to us for help because we had the experience and the empire the galactic empire we were starting to create so it's wild to see the lyran plight or the lyran journey because this isn't just something unique to me so many lyrans have this understanding of being lost in the galaxy or their home world being destroyed or trying to find a new place but still want to stay true to their Lyran selves. The plot of the Lyran star seeds is the most intriguing to me and the core of who all of us are because all of our all of us as souls have this connection to Lyra that's very unique and I always find it the most interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how come they were ridiculed? How come the Lyrans were ri ridiculed? Do you know that? Oh. I actually used to ask this too. Yeah. And when I started to understand it, it made sense. So before, when the Draconians were just coming, Draconians were coming and we were talking with them and there was a huge kind of civil war on the planet because some were like, we don't like them, we do, or whatever. So we were, they were already getting good at dividing us as a people. And the Arcturians sent a message to us. Mm -hmm. And this is also it's why true. some Lyrans don't like Arcturians or mm -hmm. when they hear Arcturus, they, they love them, but they're also like, ugh, right? They feel the history behind Arcturian. And that is because the Arcturians warned us. They said, yes. listen, you shouldn't trust them. They are not trustworthy. They will do this, this, and that. And we as Lyrans, we said, oh, well, we can change them. We can help them mm -hmm. change. We were very, yes. this is where you, we were too nice. We were yeah. like, we naive. can help them too see. Naive. We were like, we could help them. And like you said, we were so naive. And then the Arcturians said, okay, well, whatever happens, it's up to you because yeah. we're not going to jump in and help you. And mm -hmm. we said, we're going to show you. We're going to show you. And then it happened. And then we went to the Arcturians. We're like, can you help us? And the Arcturians said, no. we said, we're not going to help you. Mm -hmm. And that's what vexed us was because we realized after fighting in the Lyran Wars for so long, we were like, they stood there and just watched. And they were like, yeah, we're the smart guys. We warned them. And we were so angry. And some Lyrans still have that anger in them toward Arcturians in a little bit because we would have helped them. Even if we said, oh, well, well, you guys got to fight it yourselves. We still would have jumped in and helped them because that is who we are. They said, nope, we're going to let you do it yourselves. And now that we're more advanced and we're, we're good, right? We got mm -hmm. where the Lyrans are the most respected, essentially, in the galaxy. Then the Ar we still we had to remove that thing with the Arcturians, right? And we had to mend that. So very much mended now. But yeah, I remember in my memories when I was getting them, I just, I, <laughs> lack of a better word, I hated Arcturians. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even my dad's Arcturian star and I hated him. And then I realized, okay, calm down. Then I started getting more memories. And I was like, we're past those days. We're very different now. And then it mended. Those times, I, I always use those times of our planet being destroyed and those hard times trying to find the people in the galaxy is hugely empowering now. So it will never be disempowering. It was the beginning, just like it was when we were experiencing it. But now it is the core of who we are. It made us who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I remember, or I just know. Indeed, in the Lyran Wars, the um, Arcturians did warn the Lyrans that the Draconians could not be trusted. And they told them, like... Um, if it goes south, we won't help you. Yeah, everything went south. They indeed they didn't help. But then during yeah. the Galactic War, when when the Galact the entire Galactic War started, then they actually helped because they also said like uh, we cannot let this happen again. Yeah. So do you remember yeah. uh, when you were like at all interacting with the Arcturians? Kind of maybe how you felt about them or kind of. I'm curious about you related to Arcturians. Your from your memories or what you know now about them, how you feel about them or your experience with them? I don't have any specific memories about them. I mean, like personal interactions with them, I should say. But by what I know from them is that they 
do stand by the word and because they said we won't help you like they didn't they didn't help the lyrans because they stand by their word but they're still yeah. also peaceful beings and so when the galactic war came they they were one of the first to join the fight so that this yeah. strategy would not happen again so yes. that's all i know of them i yeah. like how we paired at the end how now so many people almost everybody in the galaxy uses the lyran phrase never again even the arturians they're like we can't let what happened back then happen again here so it ended up being like we worked together so hugely they played a huge part the arcturians in our galaxy especially earth and what's going on especially when we needed as Ly if we just want to talk for, about lyrans mm -hmm. how much the lyrans we paired with them and how much they needed us we needed them and they needed us so we end up they end up joining the galactic federation which the mm -hmm. lyrans started and said yeah we're, we're on the same page let's let's do this so all that tension we had between them started mending and um you could say because the cultures are different like arcturians are very mind-based and intelligent and lyrans are very mm -hmm. heart and soul based so it's almost almost yin and a yang we learned from each other so the arcturians were realizing oh we gotta we gotta get a little more heart-based more soul-based less more emotional and the Lyrans realize, yo, we got to get a little more, we got we to gotta be more thought-based. We got to think things through because we were too heart-based way millions of years ago when our history started. We're like, whoa, we were too heart-based then. We learned hard. We got to, if we're going to be heart-based like that, we need to be able to be smart and we need to be able to spot basically deception and be able to fight darkness when it tries to destroy us. So our our like connection with them is very good now but you'll you'll still notice like lyrans especially mm -hmm. they may not favor arcturians so much because of the cultural differences even like my dad he thinks so much but i need that and i i am so heart-based and do everything from my heart and soul and he's learning from me in that so it's almost like this cultural exchange where still from my understanding and my memory so far when i talk to the galactic federation most in the galaxy we're very much mixed but looks like on earth in a lot of areas there's still some cultural mending we're doing and almost natural tension that we have if we don't understand each other and learn that we need each other mm -hmm. yeah it honestly reminds me of the reptilians not when you look in the galaxy most of the reptilian beings are positive mm -hmm. yes but, right now like we always say most of the dark forces the dark force is basically led by dark reptilians mm -hmm. yes. so people think oh all reptilians are bad but when reptilian beings are high vibrational and just like my lives as a reptilian for those who don't know uh, my lives are 90 percent lyran 10 percent draconian so I, when those times when I was a Draco, I learned a lot about their culture and their power and their fierceness. And when they change, exchange it into high vibrations, powerful warriors and healers, and they change their meshing into the Galactic Federation changed the whole dynamic of our galaxy right there. And so they're who they are. If we realize, like, if we don't learn about each other and learn who we are, we're, there's going to be natural tension, which was... Mm -hmm the great lyran wars and the orion wars and we yes, learned after all those sure. wars we need to learn from each other and mend each other mm -hmm. yeah i try to bring this also a lot like if i have conversations with people about draconians i always tell them like i'm, I'm not saying the draconians that they're the draconians that that's the draconians uh, they are like this but i always try to say like it's not all of them okay yeah in the in the early days most of them were this way indeed but now most of them are actually positive but it's because yeah. it's because those 13 royal families as we know them the 13 draconian families which are still negative because they are here on earth all we see is, is negative reptiles but if you go beyond yeah. the earth then you will actually see that there are more positive ones now than negative ones and this is something that i always try to bring in conversations also exactly and when you look at some of the draco star seeds they're on different versions of the journey like my mom's a draco star seed she's far from the darkness she's very she's a amazing healer you know when reptilian beings when they're in the light their destructive abilities when they're dark mm -hmm. it like totally flips yes, so they absolutely. the reptilians are the best healers of the galaxy better than anybody you'll find in the galaxy really and so my mom is a really good healer but then you come across some draco star seeds 
and they struggle with um they struggle with maybe anger issues or aggression it's almost like they've been in the darkness a little longer or out of <laughs> in the light a little less than some other draco star seeds mm -hmm. so you'll notice it's kind of a a difference but it's just like when you look at for example white people on earth everybody all these people of color will look at white people and say they're the reason they they did this and it's like yeah they did but look how high vibrational they are now mm -hmm. yeah and it's just like like when you look at lyrans as like black people and draco as the white people and then now it's flipping so now the power is shifting and we're realizing the truth but just like how lyrans were then saying look look they're the bad guy they're the bad guy but the reptilians are like look not all of us are like that anymore. It's shifting. We could unify and we're doing that. So it's just like how people of color will still look at white people as negative or racist. And, you know, we're like, listen, that was back in the day. Not all white people are racist. Like you, you can't just go around thinking that. And so it's the same thing with reptilians for sure. Mm -hmm. And seeing how much our history is replaying the galactic histories we're playing here on yes, earth and how it has we play on earth coolest thing in the world mm -hmm. i do believe everything is silently going back to the source if you know that because this, the source was pure light and love and then it split himself into infinite amount of souls as we know souls right now the source wants to experience so it also created darker versions of itself and you know it goes on creation of the universe stuff like that now all the beings i know you can see that slowly everything is going back to the light, back to source, until source yeah. comes, becomes complete again, and finally realizes who he is or who it is. And that is the cool. That's the whole reason why our soul chose to be in this galaxy at this time mm -hmm. was to experience this. And what's fascinating is the Galactic Federation calls the Milky Way or they say the Milky Way is called a broken galaxy. Because mm -hmm. other galaxies have not gone through what we've mm -hmm. gone through in this yeah, one. true. So like Andromeda, almost all beings in the Milky Way, even all star seeds look to Andromeda like this. Like they kind of bow down to Andromedans. Even me, I have extreme high respect to Andromeda. And Andro when I see an Andromedan star seed, I'm like, I love you no matter what. And they're like, thank you. And I'm like, no, you'll understand when you get your memories. And so there's this high respect for Andromeda and other galaxies like the Triangulum um, and some other galaxies. They're not like the Milky Way. Milky Way is very, was broken mm -hmm. and it's very much healed now, but it's the same thing. It's like merging with the light. Andromeda and all those other galaxies, they had their journey and they meshed with the light. The Milky Way had one of the hardest in the mm -hmm. universe. Yes, for sure. And now they're fully meshing into the light again but as souls we were like we want to experience this we want to do this and get here because it also helps our ascension we being in the milky way when our souls go way beyond we're like all right we don't need to go to the physical no more everything's good now whatever whatever we are going to be like sixth and seventh dimensional consciousnesses and beings that did not come to the milky way it's going to be a little slower so you notice mm -hmm. the further you go in the darkness the further you go into the light yes exactly why true. souls chose to come here mm -hmm. it's all so um back to the topic about past lives more not not um history mainly but what are some truths um that you have discovered um from your memories Ooh. okay Here's, depending on the level you want to talk about, let's start with, like, the physical level. Mm -hmm. So, like, truths, like, truths like how everything that's happened on Earth basically stem from ETs. We're talking any biblical or religious mm -hmm. story. All yes. these religions are true. Yes. All of them are true, but they're just different understandings or hypotheses of the greater truth. Mm -hmm. So, they're just all, um, like, hypotheses. So, like, if you believed... Like if you were around during Jesus times, then you were like, oh, I'm a Christian. I, I, this, all this happened and God's real and all of that. If you were around during Hindu times, it was like, okay, you know, these are real. All these ETs that were depicted as gods, really just extraterrestrial beings here to help or here to help humans rise in consciousness. So everything that's happened in any religious story is true to an extent, but not like how they say, right? So like, Noah's Ark wasn't a damn wooden boat. It was <laughs> yeah. it was a UFO it was. that had all the DNA of all the animals. So 
you look around and so everything that's happened on earth has et influence or is watched over or manipulated by et so earth end up being the middle of all the stuff happening around in the galaxy and so looking at that is cool and looking on the greater level when it comes to memories seeing how we as souls like to experience certain things or like how they say ets are among us for example mm -hmm. and ran instantly humans think oh well that means aliens and they always view like rays <laughs> or whatever yeah. aliens are walking among us in the disguise as humans well that is true but not like how they say on the news you hear all the time all oh, the ets among us and there's more than and they always say there's more of them than you think and but they don't tell you exactly what they mean by ets among us yes there's some that are physically walking among us and that you would think are human because they look so human or they're shape-shifted in a way but majority of the ETs that are on Earth have human body because their souls went into a human form. And so then they're like, all right, I need to incarnate on the planet as one of them so then I can do my work as one of them. And then we're going to, at the end in 2027 and 2028, when everything's out, then we're going to, like I always say, we're going to take off our mask and go <laughs> like this and just rip it off. But it's not going to be like that. It's just people are going to be, like their eyes are going to open. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh my God, you're a, you're an Andromedan, you're a Pleiadian, you're going to be like, yep, I decided to incarnate here, whatever, whatever. So they don't exactly tell you what it means by ETs among us, but humans will soon. When did you say 2027, you said? Yep, that's the time, the year that they gave humans to expose the truth themselves. So mm -hmm. 2027 is when all the extraterrestrial stuff is going to be known and maybe not like it's just it's just going to be known and then there's going to be work to initiate a peaceful first contact and then all of us are going to be like yep we've been here we work for the galactic federation we've been helping y'all and then star seeds are going to be very popular it's going to be like they're literally going to say the ets that were among us and are still among us they're all coming out mm -hmm. so even everybody in our server is going to be pretty well known <laughs> because of that reason so we're gonna all of these star seeds are gonna be the new celebrities in the 5d earth <laughs> that is being initiated yeah so my viewers don't know about the server yet at least i don't think so can you present the server to them yes our server is called the galactic allegiance of gaia if you want you could join it and everybody in there is on different levels of consciousness but they all realize that they're galactic federation agents that they came here for a bigger purpose beyond beyond what is told to us or what is known. We know our bigger purpose here. And all of those people are coming to the server slowly. So if you know you work for the Galactic Federation or you know that you have a bigger purpose and you are a starseed, go on and join. And all of us in there are working together and we are engaging with each other. It is definitely a safe space for us mm -hmm. yes it is we also do a lot of classes in there so about galactic yeah. history or astral missions also travel stuff like that and it is so incredibly fun mm -hmm. and if you yes. at any mode are like i want to be a teacher or you want to be part of our defense force we call it part of the people that go to the astral too and are fighting or are protecting people energetically in the server and outside the server you can join that too we have so much things that we want to do and are doing and that we need more people like you to join mm -hmm. yeah the link for that will be in the description of the videos um if you guys want to join um so uh, cash how did your abilities in clairsentience and claircognic how do you pronounce that I'm, I'm not native english speaker you already heard it what is it Claire? Cognificance or something? How do you pronounce? Their cognizance. It? Yes, yes, <laughs> cognizance. Um, yeah. How do they help you in uh, assessing and interpreting um, your past life memories? So I started getting them around. I was already really an empath in high school, and I could feel people's energy. But I was so focused on my personal life that I didn't use it so much. I just knew I was an empath, and I was really attached to projection and stuff like that. So then after high school, I started getting into it more and studying. I'm like, okay, now I have time to understand this more. Using it, that's when my abilities started to grow more because I was using them consciously and it was like working out my third eye. So then I started gaining more abilities and being able to get more access to the spirit realm. And then I started experimenting with like portals. And that's when other beings started coming to you. Like you guys already know I have a huge portal in my room and hundreds of beings coming in every day. 
and I speak with them and I had to get confirmation first. I would tell them to tell me something and then I would ask somebody, they'd be like, how do you know that? How do you know that? And then I, I won't tell them an alien came in my room. I'll just be like, oh yeah, um, I just know stuff I shouldn't, but mm -hmm. I'm like, the Syrians came through my portal and told me some shit about Earth and they told me this, <laughs> right? So <clears throat> there's like so much um, access started getting and then they started calling me um, certain names. Like I remember when they started calling me Commander <laughs> or like I had a friend who's a witch. She's now basically like an open channel for so many different beings. It's kind of it's kind of weird because she's light and dark. She was channeling a being. Uh, it was like basically a dark being and it was talking to me. And the being called me leader of the Lyrans or commander. And as I started waking up, I was mm -hmm. like, what? why do I keep hearing that from all these beings and stuff like that? Why am I labeled that? And then as I started seeing my past lives and seeing my soul's contents, it started making sense. And then after I started seeing enough memories, I was like, all right, so I know who I am. What is my purpose here on earth? Why am I here? And then I started getting briefings. They would tell me and then I'm like, okay, that explains my childhood. That explains this, this and that. Explains this. It just started explaining everything. And then I just, right away, I just stepped into my purpose. So I'm only at the beginning of what I'm going to be doing and who I am, but I know my mission. And that's all because of being able to access the astral realm and understanding my soul's contents. The whole 5D thing getting to 5d i worked so hard to get there and of course i can't be in 5d 24 7 i'd say i'm in 5d 90 percent of the day <laughs> so maybe a day where something really pisses me off and then i have to mm -hmm. change my energy I'm like, okay <laughs> and then i have to get into it and then i realize my vibration lowered but then when i get back in 5d again i have straight access to my soul again and everything so i have a bigger picture and realizing even if something bad happens i have a bigger picture of it so i'm not even upset I'm excited and I, it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. Yes, it gets emotional, but I see I'm excited because my soul is like, yes, I get to experience this thing. And it's always like a video game. Earth is like a video game to me. I'm like, oh, I'm in this video game. I'm doing this. How do I want to handle this? Huge challenge happening. What do I want to do here? Life just becomes so exciting. And they say 5D, you're extremely high vibrational and happy, unconditional love. And that's only a symptom of getting to the fifth dimensional consciousness. So everybody's like, oh, well, let's get to 5D. You have to be happy all the time. You got to do all this and that. Mm -hmm. No, that's just what happens when you do shift into that 5D awareness, which 5D is just soul. Yes. So then that's why you get all your past life memories and all mm -hmm. that stuff. For those who don't know, how do you shift to the 5D? So let's go to 3D. So 3D is physical awareness. So we were just... Living a physical life, yep, I'm my tea, I go to work, I drive, yada, yada, yada. 40 is astral awareness. So that means you're aware of the astral realm, you're aware there's energy, there's different spirits, and there's a god, and you could talk to the planet, stuff like that. For levels of consciousness, you're aware of that. 5D is soul level. So that's when you become aware that you are conscious that's just experiencing these things. You choose to go into the 4D or 3D to experience certain things or for a certain agenda so when you become when you get there you literally view life like a video game you're like oh i'm just here for this lifetime and i'm gonna enjoy it and when you get to that level you you always think about your lives you're like oh i remember your past lives just become regular memories you're like oh, i remember this planet when I, this is not oh i'm gonna bring those I'm going to have to take that. I got to find that sword I used then and bring it here now. And then you're looking for a sword. And it's like, why are you looking for a sword? And you're in your head. You're like, because I, I need the one that I had in Lyra or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I have the 5D, it's all just soul level. And you go beyond the ego. You're aware. Okay. Like, for example, me in this incarnation, I'm, I'm Vincent and I, I do these things, but I'm aware my life, my soul is just experiencing this ego which is Vincent. And so I'm beyond that. I, I use it, but I don't only operate from it. Like, I'm not just here like, oh, I'm Vincent and I do this, this and that. I'm like, oh, and th this is me experiencing this lifetime as a human named Vincent. And I like it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So apart from the 5D, what are some um, things that can help people remember their past lives? I would say, because really the only way to get there is through 5d would make sense so just more getting in touch with who you are and realizing the astral realm 
and realizing and becoming aware that there's more above that. When you step in that awareness, then you're like, damn, I want to know who I was before this lifetime. And then you want to explore it. And then maybe you get little glimpses of it. Like your guides will give you a little glimpse. And you're like, oh my God. I remember my first glimpse. It was, I was a bounty hunter. And I was, it basically looked like Zero Suit Samus or Metroid. <laughs> and I was in a spaceship alone. It literally looked exactly like Metroid. Um, I was alone. This when I was basically a bounty hunter and I was fighting the darkness and I was looking for my family around the galaxy. I just saw that glimpse and I was like, cool, I was a princess? And I, I found the galaxy alone like that? Cool. And it got me hyped for it. And then I realized the history behind it. I was like, ooh, that's kind of a little bit darker than I thought, but that makes sense and it gets me my power. So you'll notice you get little glimpses or flicks of it to get you excited. And then when you get into 5D, then you realize the truth behind those glimpses. And then you realize who you truly are. So awareness, I would say, I would say that awareness of the truth is going to help you get to the truth. Mm -hmm, yeah. Now, speaking of all this stuff, might bring a lot of skepticism. Um, how do you deal with that? You're going to deal with that always. At the end, I always tell myself, they're going to know. Like, I actually, let me tell you this. I did a, I did a school uh, presentation in the elementary school near me. <laughs> and I talked, it was a black history one and going deep into like the history before mm -hmm. the black, yeah. the history that were taught in the books, mm -hmm. right? Like ancient African history and the empire and stuff like that. They loved it. They were like, and then at the <laughs> end, I would talk about consciousness and what I do. Yeah. None of them believed me. Mm -hmm. None of them did. <laughs> and they were like, um, they would ask me questions, but they were intrigued, but they didn't believe me. And I said, I know you guys don't believe me. I was like, I feel it. <laughs> All, none of y'all believe me, but I promise you, I guarantee you that you will. You won't believe it. You will understand it in the future. And they looked at me and they were like, hmm. They were like, I don't believe that too. And I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I guarantee you will. I'll yes. bet my, I'll bet a million dollars on that. I don't even got a million dollars yet, <laughs> but I bet a million dollars right now. And so from then on, I just rested knowing I have to be, it was just like in Lyra, how we were ridiculed uh, mm -hmm, for yeah. doing what we do. Mm -hmm. And then everybody realized at the end, just like this, yes. we got to face the ridicule. We got to be, we got to be the light in the dark for them to see, whoa, why are we, why are we like this? And then they see the truth. We are the ones to show the rest the mm -hmm. truth and help them step into it. That's also how oh, I handle it. Just saying like, you will see in the future. You will see. Like, you might not believe it now, but eventually you will see for yourself. <laughs> but I'm always like, yeah. I'm always like, and then I want to see your faces. <laughs> once you realize it, once you see it, then I want to see your faces. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but like, <laughs> please record. But like, when, as soon as it happens, make sure you have your phone yeah. out and you record in yourself because I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> You're like oh damn he was right <laughs> that's gonna be my favorite in the world at the <laughs> end when they're like they're like itching their heads they're like yeah. damn all that spiritual stuff he was saying that i called him crazy he was right the whole time and then they're gonna mm -hmm. go back and listen to everything you were saying mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um so you've answered a lot of the questions by just talking <laughs> about stuff so i'm just seeing um if there is anything else i loved our conversation so far mm -hmm. yes and it was great memories is a very deep topic mm -hmm. that you could go anywhere with it so if you ever want to talk about this again i love your podcast so i would love to come on again <laughs> and we could talk about 5d or or even Ash, we mm -hmm. could talk, we yeah. literally have infinite stuff we could talk about. Even when <laughs> it's just we in, can talk about anything. Yeah, even when it's just <laughs> in past life memories, if you want to talk about that, there is like infinite areas we could delve into. So this is a very interesting and complex topic. Mm -hmm. You said in the in the question list, list I gave you, you said, I will fight for you and the world till the end. What did this commitment look like in your daily life and work everything i do is for earth and that sounds crazy but again like we always say you guys will see at the end everything i do is for the galaxy the reason i came to this planet was not just for gaia and for humans which are essentially like our cousins but the galaxy the galaxy is lo everybody in the galaxy if you want to say in the universe i'll rest with the galaxy for now because it's what i know is all eyes on earth mm -hmm. trillions of beings yes, watching earth for sure to see what's going to happen and i am here for those people and i'm here for all these beings so to my day-to-day -day life it looks like always evolving 
always bigging up my game to get stronger for the people because I'm, I'm aware that I'm also part of the people's strength and I need to be the people's strength. So in awareness of my mission, it gets me always in that mission mode. So um, even it could be little things like I'm guided, it may be an assignment. I'm guided to go for a walk and then there's someone who needs help or the Federation's like, you need to help this person. And I go over there and then that person's there or um, taking care of my family, um, whatever it is, it's always helping everybody evolve, step into their power or to step into my power to help others step into their power. It always looks like a constant adventure. I would say evolution within myself for the world and in the world for me. It's so complex, but no matter what, I gave my soul to my mission as a Galactic Federation agent. And I came to Earth for that, and I will always rest in that forever. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's so beautiful. <laughs> this is really a beautiful message. Looking to the future, what projects or endeavors are you most excited about? I'm excited for the server, mm -hmm. how yes, large it's getting, sure. and the complexity. We're, we've only been doing this for like, like nine months, yeah. and we're doing amazing. So to I love helping as we're building this empire, seeing it evolve and become larger and more powerful, seeing us evolve together. Like we've in the server been through a hell of a lot and it makes us so much more closer as a family and more stronger in our mission together. That and the businesses I'm developing and what I'm doing on social media, my whole future, I'm dedicated to building up for all of that. So being essentially just being my best self and the businesses, the social media, the server, those are these projects that I'm working on. A lot of people will be like, wow, you got a lot on your plate. That was one thing I had to learn for my strength is being able to handle that or to be able to organize myself or to essentially evolve. And I love adventure and I love challenge. So just being on this planet alone, the best thing, I don't even want to play video games because I'm like, <laughs> I am in the video game, like dead ass. So yeah. I'd say my biggest project though, I would say, I would say the server. It's one of the best things that's ever happened to me. One of the best things and one of the hugest missions I had when I was a few years ago, I was like, I want to create a server where all the star seeds are and we got this and that and now we're here. And I'm like, wow, we're here. Everything we wanted, we're here. And now we're going to evolve to the next level, the next powerful level. So I would say that's my most powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So notice something. I don't know if you did it on purpose or if you didn't even notice it yourself. But I just looked when the server was created. Mm -hmm. And the day it is created, uh, when was the 12th, 12th um, April? I think that's, that's really like the birthday or the day when jesus christ was born oh bro i don't know if that has a linkage and i'm doing 333 <laughs> right now yeah, so i don't know if that's saying something but that's really cool that's a really cool coincidence mm -hmm. in quotations yeah. <laughs> like i don't know if it's what is it if it was a 12th april but i know some somewhere early april um that jesus was born like the real date of his birth wow I'm gonna keep that in mind now. Cool. <laughs> I just, I just noticed that. I was like, mm. like, okay, maybe the server is Jesus. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, wow. I don't think so. But I think it has a connection to it. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, it it's, can't it's, be it's a has, coincidence. Yeah. I'm curious now why, why it's like that. Like, if this mm -hmm. is not a coincidence, why? The Christ energy. <laughs> I'm thinking that. I'm thinking that for sure. Mm -hmm. That's it. I think. Yeah. I have no more questions that I prepared in advance. <laughs> I think this but, is a good place but, to end it. We delved yeah, deep yeah. into this, and I know this is going to be a perfect gateway into our next one if we do do another one. I into, hope so. Definitely, I'm so down for it. <laughs> so our next one, I know this is just a gateway into the next like um, episode. The next episode we do together, it's going to be a lot deeper, more. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There's going to be something more there. I like. I hope by then I'm also a little bit more confident of speaking. <laughs> you did amazing. Because... I want to say that. And I want y'all to big up my homeboy, Andy, because <laughs> he's busting it up, bro. And he's, he's, well, let me say, you are very courageous. Like you're brave to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. F it, man. I'm going to make my podcast and I'm going <laughs> to do this and that. So I want to give you big up. And for all the yes. stuff you're doing in the server for us, I, I see you. 
I want to say that. <laughs> Thank you. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I am. I mean, I don't get this a lot. You're a beautiful soul, man, and I appreciate you with me here on my plot and my mission. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, thank you for having me on, too. I think it's a perfect place to mm -hmm. end it. Yes. And it then is. you guys will see us again soon for sure. Mm -hmm. And you guys will see more episodes of Andy. I can't wait to watch the other episodes with other people. So, keep on checking them out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bye bye. <laughs>